Tark slowly stalked through the thick foliage, his senses on high alert. His prey was close, he could feel it. These humans were such easy targets, practically begging to be hunted. Their soft skin and lack of natural defenses made them like Dakma to the slaughter. Tark had been hunting humans for years. Ever since discovering their isolated planet, he and his fellow Yutani had found great sport in testing their skill against the hapless creatures. At first, the humans had been completely oblivious, unaware of the danger that lurked in the shadows. But over time, they learned. Now, the hunt required more skill. The humans established settlements with guards and security. They ventured out in groups, watchful for anything out of the ordinary. But they were still no Matt T for Tark. He was a master hunter, trained from birth to track, outwit and destroy. A snapped branch up ahead froze Tark in his tracks. He sank lower, blending into the foliage. His heat-sensing eyes picked up a flash of warmth and movement. Human. Tark's hearts quickened. This was almost too easy. He slid his long serrated blade from its sheath, gripped it tightly and moved forward. He was upon the human in seconds. A female, small and vulnerable. She spun around at the sound of his approach, eyes widening in terror. She opened her mouth to scream but it was cut off as Tark's blade sliced through her neck in one smooth motion. Hot blood sprayed across his chest plates as her body crumpled to the ground. The thrill of the kill raced through Tark's veins. These humans were such easy prey. He retrieved his blade and was preparing to carry the body off when a sudden searing pain tore through his shoulder. Tark roared in surprise and rage. He glanced down to see a primitive rounded projectile embedded in his flesh. Toxic blood leaked from the wound, these humans and their projectile weapons. Before he could react, two more projectiles hit him, one piercing his thigh, the other his gut. He stumbled back, confused. How could the humans have set a trap? He was the hunter here, not them. His blood boiling, Tark turned to find the source of the attacks. There, twenty meters away, hidden in the bushes, a human male holding one of their blast sticks but it was what was mounted on top that froze Tark's blood. Ayutani shoulder cannon. Impossible. How could these humans have obtained Yutani technology? But the proof was staring him down. The human had somehow attached the cannon to his primitive blast stick and was now aiming it directly at Tark. There was no time to dodge as a plasma burst erupted from the barrel. It smashed into Tark's chest, burning through flesh and bone. He was slammed backwards, his world exploding into excruciating pain. Through the haze he saw the human approach, standing over him, W watching him die. The tables had turned. The hunter had become the hunted. Tark tried to lift his blade but his limbs wouldn't respond. The toxins from the projectiles had weakened him beyond recovery. As darkness crept into his vision, Tark experienced something unfamiliar. Fear. He realized in this moment, with terrible clarity, that these humans were more than just easy prey. They had become the predators. And now he was nothing but their trophy. The darkness took him. His hearts beat their last. The hunt was over. It was only the beginning. Deep in the forest, Doran lowered the jury-rigged plasma rifle and let out a shuddering breath. It had worked. The weapon he had cobbled together from scavenged parts had saved him from certain death. He stared down at the predator's lifeless body. Black blood pooled around its massive frame. Grotesque, otherworldly, and yet now just another hunt trophy. Doran shook his head in disbelief. How quickly their fortunes had changed. When the first ships appeared in the sky, the Utani were greeted as visitors from another world. But their predatory nature quickly revealed itself. The hunting parties began soon after, treating humans as easy sport. Like safari animals to be slaughtered for amusement. Those first hunts had been a massacre. Like lambs to the slaughter, they never stood a chance against the merciless alien warriors and their advanced weaponry. Cities burned and millions died as a brutal new apex predator staked its claim. But humans are resilient, and they learn fast. Fighting back seemed suicidal, but hiding wasn't an option. So an uneasy cooperation formed between government forces and civilian militias. Knowledge was power. And the Utani had the knowledge. The first goal was understanding Utani tech. Teams scoured hunting sites, gathering scraps, energy sources, weapons, armor, anything that could be reverse engineered. Earth's best scientists and engineers worked around the clock to unlock the secrets. Progress was slow but steady. 
power sources were replicated, weapons recreated. There were setbacks and casualties, but with each small breakthrough, hope grew. The playing field was leveling. Doran had been part of the effort from the start. An engineer by trade, he had a knack for understanding alien tech. He fought back tears as memories flooded in. The first time a cobbled-together Yutani rifle succeeded in taking down a hunter. The discovery of energy shielding and how to pierce it. And now this mounting shoulder cannons on standard-issue plasma rifles. Turning hunters into the hunted. There was still so much work to do. The Yutani numbers and tech advantage was massive. But this was a turning point. The first step on a long road. Doran looked down at the predator corpse again and allowed himself a brief moment of satisfaction. Not such easy prey after all. Are we, he muttered. Then he slung his rifle and got back to work. There was a Utani ship parked somewhere nearby that might have useful tech, and more hunters would be on the way when this one didn't report back. They had to be ready. The hunt was just beginning. Tarkin roared in rage as his spear lodged deep in the tree trunk, missing the human by centimeters. These clever prey animals and their projectile weapons. His cloak flickered as a primitive metal slug deflected off the energy shielding. Close. Too close. He had tracked this human for three sun cycles across fifty hectums of forest, the most cunning and elusive prey he had ever faced. Other Yutani laughed in disbelief when he reported human trophies escaping his hunt, claiming incompetence or exaggeration. They knew nothing. This planet teemed with lethal creatures hidden amongst harmless grazing beasts, deceitful plants with toxins that pierced Yutani flesh as easily as human. He had the scar trophies to prove it. And the humans hairless and weak in body, but clever and resourceful in mind. Their screams of terror when flushed from cover roused his hunter's blood, but their cunning when cornered interrupted many a kill. Once again the human dashed his trophy attempt. But the chase continued. Tarkin smiled, mandibles flexing. Yes, flee little human, run and hide. You only prolong the inevitable. He will run you to ground soon enough. These humans had spirit, he admitted grudgingly. That just made them more satisfying trophies. When properly mounted back home, they would remind Tarkin of each hard-fought victory. He retrieved his spear and set off again, massive limbs propelling him swiftly. The human thought it could escape by crossing water, but Tarkin was an elite scoutmaster. He would track prey across any terrain. Reaching the river, he paused to taste the air. There a hint of sweat and fear. The human had crossed and continued northeast. Swift as a rycat, Tarkin splashed across and picked up the trail. The chase took them over increasingly difficult ground. Rocky outcroppings and tangled vines blocked easy passage. The human was tiring, staggering at times, but desperation kept it moving. Such tenacious prey. Tarkin's hearts quickened as the terrain led towards a box canyon. The perfect place to pin down wounded prey. He halted just before the canyon mouth and extended his spear to full length. He charged in spear first, seeking a quick impale, and stumbled forward confused. No human awaited him. A neat trap with vines and rocks had made the canyon seem closed. Tricky prey. But its scent was still strong. Tarkin roared in annoyance and looped around to find where it had exited. Suddenly a loud crack echoed through the canyon. Searing pain erupted in Tarkin's thigh as a slug penetrated his hide and tore into muscle. Damn human weapons! He pivoted to neutralize the threat, and froze in shock. The human stood atop the canyon wall clutching not a primitive slug thrower, but a Utani plasma rifle. Impossible. The plasma bolt sizzled through the air and slammed into Tarkin's shoulder, burning away cloak and armor. He staggered back, two limbs disabled. What devilry was this? rifle raised, the human called out in its strange tongue. The meaning was clear stand down or be destroyed. Tarkin paused, pride warring with survival instinct, to surrender to prey. Unthinkable. But he was vastly outmatched now. He lowered his spear in reluctant submission. The human gestured with the rifle towards the trees. It wanted him to withdraw. Swallowing rage, Tarkin complied. He activated his cloak and limped into the forest. The hunt was over for now. But as he painfully made his way back to the shuttle, Tarkin swore a vengeful oath. This battle was lost, but the hunt would continue another day, and when it did, he would be better armed and prepared. Next time, no mere clever human would humiliate him so. He would learn from this mistake and grow stronger, adapt as prey so often did, and eventually he would claim his trophy, 
This, he swore with cold hunter's fury. The human's days were numbered. The true hunt had only just begun. Captain Weller surveyed the scene from his hilltop perch, the ruined Utani encampment below, gray smoke pluming into the morning sky. Bodies and wreckage scattered across the valley told the story of a hard-fought victory. The militia had done its job well. It had been a gamble, this night raid. Their intel suggested the main Utani force had moved out, leaving only a garrison behind. They planned to catch them asleep, inflict maximum damage, and withdraw before reinforcements arrived. A risky gambit, but it paid off. The aftermath below confirmed they'd caught the bastards completely off guard. Weller allowed himself a grim smile. After all these months of hit and run attacks, it felt good to finally hand the hunters a real defeat. Of course, this was just one minor skirmish in a much larger war. The Utani had the advantage in numbers, weapons, and sheer ruthlessness. Their campaign of terror across Earth seemed unstoppable. Cities burned, millions slaughtered as sport. But slowly, inevitably, the humans learned, adapted, fought back. Weller had seen it firsthand leading militia forces. Frantic defense became stoic resilience. Terror became calculated defiance. Lambs to the slaughter turned into an army of wolves. And now here finally a hint of victory, proof that the tide could turn. It gave him hope in a war that often held little. Weller turned to his assembled troops. Farmers, shopkeeps, teachers, civilians, mostly. Yet now hardened soldiers. Their faces showed exhaustion muted by satisfaction. They knew what this meant as well. You done good here today, Weller told them. Our kin owe you their lives. Word will spread of what we accomplished, and more will join the cause, make no mistake. One of the militia, a young woman who had lost family in the initial attacks, spoke up. Do you really think we can win, Captain? Drive them off our world for good. Weller measured his response. Honesty without despair. It won't be quick or easy, but we will win because we must, he pointed back towards the smoldering camp. Imagine this scene, repeated a hundred times across the land. Imagine our enemy limping back to its ships, realizing this world will never submit. That's how we'll win. The young woman nodded, eyes brightening with fragile hope. The other militia seemed to stand straighter, strengthened by Weller's conviction. They were learning, as he had, that victory came not just through strength of arms, but strength of belief. From the valley came noises of movement. Survivors stirring, ships arriving. Weller turned to his people. Time we moved out. The next fight awaits he tossed a plasma rifle to the young woman, who caught it deftly. Let's go show M who's the prey and who's the damn hunters now. Tight grins answered him. Together they descended the hill and disappeared into the trees. The war went on, and with each new battle the tide shifted further. Earth would never surrender. Never. Merrick huddled inside the cave, clutching his plasma rifle and trying not to panic. Outside, the forest had gone deathly quiet. The only sounds were the pounding of his heart and the clatter of pebbles. His pursuer was close. This was supposed to be a simple scouting mission. Locate the Utani encampment, gather intel, withdraw. Just him and Dallin, his brother in arms. In and out quick and clean. Until everything went wrong. They concealed themselves near the camp as planned and were preparing to sneak closer when Dallin's rifle discharge alarm sounded. A malfunction caused it to fire a single bolt into the night. The Utani came rushing out, armor glinting in firelight. Marek and Dallin ran for their lives, weaving through moonlit forest at full sprint, but the Utani were right behind them. Splitting up was their only chance, and so Marek could only watch in horror as an energy blast lit up the trees, followed by a terrible scream. Now Merrick was alone, being hunted. He tried to control his breathing, listening intently. Was that footsteps crunching leaves? A stealthy form gliding between trees? He raised his rifle with trembling hands. How long until the hunter found his hiding spot and came for him? Outside the cave, Tarkin toggled his cloak off and smiled. Well hidden from sight, but not from scent. These clumsy humans forgot Yutani track by smell as much as sight. He had followed the fear stink right to its source. His prey was cornered now, time to finish the hunt. Tarkin drew his ceremonial dagger. He would take this human skull and brain meat back as trophies, fitting punishment for its insolence in firing upon him. He crept forward, relishing the anticipation. He paused at the cave mouth, 
then plunged inside teeth bared and dagger raised high. The human was barely visible in the darkness, but its scream of terror was sweet music. It fired its rifle wildly, plasma bolts searing past Tarkin's head. He laughed. Did it hope to stop him with such clumsy panic? He surged forward to claim his prize. His amusement turned to confusion as the human tossed its useless rifle aside and hoisted. An Utani shoulder cannon? Impossible. Before Tarkin could react, a bolt of plasma filled the tight cavern, blinding him. His world became pain as the blast slammed into his chest, burning through flesh and bone. Then came darkness. When his vision returned, the human stood above him. Tarkin tried to rise but could not move. Paralyzing toxins. Clever prey. You have bested me this time. He was too damaged to pursue and they both knew it. Snarling in pain and frustration, Tarkin activated his cloak and retreated from the cave. As the human's primitive weapons faded into the distance, Tarkin was left alone with his thoughts. He had underestimated this soft-skinned ape. It had adapted faster than he anticipated. Turned hunter into prey in an instant. If all humans learned so quickly, the coming seasons promised more dangerous hunts. The quiet of the forest held no answers. But Tarkin knew this defeat changed nothing. The humans would remain prey clever and elusive for a time perhaps, but prey nonetheless. He would heal, learn, and the great hunt would continue.